today we have something super interesting, a full tower from Zalman. Okay, this thing is huge. And just for size reference, it's almost as big as the Fantix N2 Elite. Cases are getting way too big these days. So the case is pretty huge, but I appreciate that the tempered glass panels have been removed during shipment. So the actual frame is much lighter to you know carry and work around. And then you can install the glass side panels when you're actually finished. That's brilliant. So let's find out if this thing is any good right after this. The new Master Liquid all-in-one coolers are available in 120 and 240 mm stylish radiator sizes with air balance fans included for best airflow and RGB sync on the pump and the fans that are controlled via this hub or through your motherboard. Check out the ML120L and 240L down below. All right, so the Zalman X7 full tower is an interesting case scenario because of Computex two years ago. Basically, we saw an early prototype uh, in development stages and Zalman requested feedback from the community, you guys, and they actually were reading the comments and actually a lot of the feedback that you guys provided in the comments was taken into the final product. But in order to keep a little bit of suspense for this video, I'm gonna reveal the price in the end. So this should be interesting. Now you guys may know my thoughts about really large super towers. And if you're going for a water cooling build, then a large tower makes sense if they're done right. But unfortunately, Zalman failed on so many accounts with the X7, it's not even funny. It's just large for the sake of being large. So this is supposed to be their most premium enclosure, yet we still have misaligned mounting screws. There's a vibrant red Molex connector on the rear side. This is where a glass panel is supposed to sit. Uh, the fans use a proprietary six pin connection because is that what premium users want? The aluminum edges and a few spots are warped. And because we have the aluminum surface running on the top, the front, the bottom, and even the rear, you gotta be careful not to cut yourself because the edges are not refined and are super sharp everywhere. The bottom panel is the perfect example as the case feet are these tiny plastic pieces and so my table got all scratched up because of the aluminum edges and seriously Zalman this is just lazy a dust filter that is not easily accessible and there's practically no room for the power supply to breathe anyway this open space in the front should have been switched with the back and I also feel that the brush texture also feels outdated. Sandblasted aluminum is the better way to go forward on any aluminum surface. I do like the overall shape of the frame though. It's got some elegant uh, elements, but oh my goodness, what's happening on the power supply shroud with that giant branding? Let this be a realization moment that no PC enthusiast or hardcore brand loyalists find this type of model text attractive. If anything, it's embarrassing and they should have kept the original shroud from the pro prototype case from two years ago. Now the one unique part of the exterior is the IO slash fan controller knobs. They all have this extremely satisfying smooth rotation and analog feel to adjust the fan speed, brightness of the LEDs and the speed of the lighting effects. But everyone is moving towards software control. So this already feels outdated, but of course I do enjoy a throwback and the four USB three ports are appreciated too. Unfortunately, the lighting integration on the shroud is far from uniform. If anything, it makes it looks even worse when the X7 part, for example, is not even illuminated with the uh, internal LED strip. And even when the glass panel is on, the tint is so dark that you practically cannot even see the model name uh, on the shroud, which is actually a good thing. There's a front ambient strip that is nice, but it doesn't sync in color with the fans for some reason, and none of the fans displayed anything in the blue channel, so I had no blues or purples. And overall, this is a disappointing execution all around. Of course, this would not be a 2017 release without a front section choking point. What's strange though, there's a dust filter right behind the aluminum plate. It makes no sense as the aluminum cover is flush with the plastic frame, so the only ventilation points are on both sides that have this coarse mesh. Also, you can probably notice more frame restriction on those fans. Even though the mounting points are flexible, this whole front section is a total failure. And on the inside, you can fit a second ATX motherboard beside those fans because the interior proportions for the X7 are just way off. Even with an eATX motherboard, you'll need two reservoirs beside that second row of rubber grommets to occupy that space. The power supply shroud has a few good features though, like a mount for a vertical GPU, but they didn't actually include 
any accessories for this to happen. And actually, aside from the standard screw bits and this poster size quick guide, accessories are non-existent. Then we have proper rubber grommets beneath the motherboard. Uh, and then we find rivets that hold the non-removable hard drive cages in the shroud chamber. So when you're building a crazy water cooling build, you also can have six three and a half inch hard drives in your system. And lastly, the front section of the shroud is only open a bit to accommodate maximum a 50 millimeter radiator. And I would say this is normal in like a regular mid tower, but for a case this long, they couldn't have made the cutout larger to support, let's say 60 millimeter rods with the push pull fans. This tiny EVGA case in comparison has more radiator room. It's absolutely embarrassing for the X7. Although I do like these GPU brackets, but uh, again, it's a cheap plastic implementation that almost symbolizes the X7 in its entirety. Moving on to the top, the fan bracket is super inconvenient to access, first removing the three screws that hold the top panel on which all of the IO is assembled, so you can't fully remove it for convenience. Next, the bracket is secured with two thumb screws underneath the frame, making installation incredibly difficult, especially with wide radiators. The bracket on the other side has three pegs that need to align, so it must be installed at an angle first. And why didn't they just stick to the original on-rails bracket like we saw at Computex two years ago? It completely boggles my mind that the final mounting procedure is so frustrating. It does support the 360 rad without any issues, but the mounting points for a 280 radiator are misaligned and you cannot have it somewhere in the middle of the bracket. Instead, you need to use the uh, corner mounting brackets uh, to install it 280 rad and I find this to be a ridiculous compromise on a bracket this large. And just to finish off the tour with the rear side, which has nothing practical in form of cable management for a case this large and this exposed, we have five SSD brackets for storage, I guess that's nice, but no covers on anything to hide the cables and all this mess. Not even a single cable tie point beside those SSD caddies. What a disappointment. Now let's put this case into this hypothetical situation where you'd want to install dual radiators for a custom loop. So my 360 rad is comfortable up top, Although installation was a pain. The GPU support bracket is good to eliminate sag, but might interfere with SATA cables. And the first row of rubber grommets is just way too far for a standard ATX motherboard. It really sucks how there's no PCI extension cable included, so I can't utilize that vertical slot for my GPU. And if you really want to experiment with how to occupy this empty space in a case, then the X7 is for you. Now the thing is, the size is not even the biggest issue, but it's lack of refinement and elegance of this tower that makes it so unappealing, like the branding on the shroud and its crappy illumination. The tempered glass side panels are fully bare with a dark tint, but no blackout perimeters nor any blackout portions on the cable management side, so everything is exposed. And there's this sense of poor attention to detail every step of the way, and it's a big slap in the face because the price, like I said in the intro, will be revealed in the end, is $299. Ouch, let that sink in for a little bit. And it's competing with the latest C700P, the new Cosmos from Cooler Master, which is a 299, but it feels like it's more premium than this thingy. And uh, cases like the Dark Base 700 and the H700i all have similar radiator and cooling options, but cost significantly less. Plus have all somewhat of interesting and unique interior options, which this thing doesn't. And I want to say that the Z machine design team needs to enter the present, get out of their bubble, because if they don't, that is how brands start to die. The new Corsair Void Pro gaming headset is comfortable, stylish in different colors, delivers fantastic wireless performance even for competitive gaming with an all new microphone for clear communications. Check out the Void Pro Wireless or Wired in the description below. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and check out this other relevant content. Let me know what you think of the Z Machine X7 in the comments. Do you think it's uh, as big of a failure as I make it out to be? Or have I missed something that you guys potentially let me know? Yeah, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.